This lesson covers deploying and managing Windows Defender. New to Windows Server 2016 is the Windows Defender feature. If I go to Add Roles and Features, Role-based or Feature-based Installation, I would select the server that I'm targeting, go to Features, and I will see Windows Defender. And you'll notice it's actually installed by default. So every new Windows Server 2016 has Defender installed and enabled. This gives me protection from malware automatically. It pulls down the definition updates directly from the Microsoft Update servers or WSUS servers if I'm leveraging that on-premises or Configuration Manager. Configuration Manager used to have its own anti-malware client for Windows 10 on Windows Server 2016 it actually uses the built-in Windows Defender. And Configuration Manager just focuses on the deployment of the definition updates and the configuration. So it's now just built in. To see the status, I can just go Start, Defender. I can see I have protection updates. It will select Turn On to make sure that is the case. And then Close. And I can see it's being monitored and protected. I can see the details of my definition updates. I can see the history of any quarantined, allowed, detected. If I go to my settings, one of the great components of this is, yes, I have real-time protection. I'm using cloud-based protection to get faster information on possible attacks. But I also have exclusions. These can be very important, especially on a server. If I go to my exclusions, I could actually exclude a file, exclude a folder, exclude certain file extensions even exclude certain processes. Now what it will actually do by default is as I add roles and features, it's intelligent they will add exclusions for those. So I have Hyper-V installed, for example. It won't try and interfere with VM worker processes or the VMMS or data in my cluster shared volumes. So it's gonna give me that automatic exclusions for the roles and features in the operating system, but I can go and add additional ones if I want. Now, from a large scale management, I could use things like Configuration Manager. I can also leverage things like the Group Policy. Here I'm looking at a Group Policy object. I would go to my Computer Configuration, Policies, Administrative Templates, Windows Components, if I expand that out, Scroll down, and I can see Windows Defender. So in here I have a whole set of options. I can enable whether it's turned on or off, so I could actually block it with this. If I was using a third-party anti-malware solution, I could disable Windows Defender through here. I can configure things like exclusions, turn off auto exclusions. If you are curious about what those automatic exclusions are, Microsoft has a TechNet article about them. And this walks through all those automatic exclusions, how I can opt out, and we just saw that in group policy. So here are all the automatic exclusions based on the various roles. Don't interfere with my virtual files, don't interfere with my cluster shared volumes, don't interfere with my VMMS or my VM worker processes. But I could configure that directly through all the different aspects of the Windows Defender group policy. If I was using Configuration Manager, I would go to the Assets and Compliance workspace, the Endpoint Protection, and here I can see anti-malware policies, and there are actually ones built in. I can see there are policies around, well, a Hyper-V host. I can import additional ones that they have configured for the various types of policy I could have in my environment. So this would then push via the Configuration Manager agent, but it's still configuring the built-in Windows Defender.